Okay, uh, welcome to the first video lesson. Um, uh, apology first, because as you can see, the video quality down in the corner there is pretty shocking. And that's because my video camera happens to be, well, about 20 years old. And if you've gone on the internet lately to see if you can even buy a webcam, nope, you can't. So uh, you're just going to have to put up with it in my shoddy uh, blue screen attempts, green screen. Well, mine's blue, it's just a rug. Um, but we'll see how we go. So this lesson, the way it's going to work is I've got a topic, which I know you haven't done, which is uh, programming techniques. Um, and throughout the video, if you ever see the pause icon appear on the screen, and I'll, I'll tell you when, <clears throat> you, I'll invite you to pause and probably do something. And that's kind of the way that the lesson would work to make it a bit more interactive rather than me writing lots of stuff down each week and expecting you to do it. Um, what I'm finding is a lot of you uh, are forgetting some of the complexity or the detail that I'm after um, and I'm getting kind of bits of work back which I know a lot of you can do better and it's just from not probably reading things carefully enough um, or forgetting them because there's too much writing so this hopefully should address a lot of those problems and make the lesson a bit more uh, interactive a bit more enjoyable um, so please do the suggested thinking when I say it I'll say um, think about this or you know jot down a couple of ideas spend two minutes doing this uh, please pause the video it's not meant to be an exercise in you uh, just clicking play and then just tuning out because it won't work um, so please pause it please do the suggested activity or exercise whether it be so I would have a pen and uh, paper handy uh, to the side just so you can kind of do that thinking uh, there and then um, please don't do two things at once don't be trying to watch this video lesson whilst playing a game or reading a book or doing something else it just it just won't work give it your attention give it your focus and it will work way better so the objectives of this session are to look at data types, operators, really get underneath what variable and constant is, the kinds of data types available. Now, you will have done a lot of this stuff um, from programming in Python, um, and this is where it falls under on the rag map. So this is a unit two skill. So this is something that can come up on the unit two paper. Um, and you'll see here, uh, there's some words which you should be familiar with, and I've mentioned, but throughout key stage three and four, um, we've got this, by the way, is the 276. This is this if you're in year 10, and this is the 277 if you're in year 9. There's no real difference other than the way they've been laid out. Uh, the content is identical for both of the courses, really, so that should not pose a big problem. Now, you've all got Python experience. <clears throat> you've all done a lot of Python, quite a lot of Python. Um, and the elements that I'm about to cover are things you've been doing which you probably didn't even know you were covering theory elements. So by doing the Python, you're actually covered a piece of theory. It's going to come up on the exam. So let's have a look at a few of those areas. So things you probably maybe knew. So coding in sequence, coding in selection, and coding in iteration. Now I'd invite you at this stage to pause your video, and I want you to jot down what your understanding of those three words is. Um, just take a moment for each one, see if you can remember and maybe give an example of each in Python. So pause your video and I'll see you in a few seconds or minutes or hopefully not hours. Pause. Okay, welcome back. And I'm hoping you've actually paused the video. Do make sure you do this, get into the habits, how the video works. Um, so this is a visual clue, um, which might kind of give away the way these things work. So uh, oh, I thought I had a summary slide there, clearly don't. So coding in sequence is one thing after the other. So it's just running through. You might go take an input, do this thing to the input um, and then output it. That would be sequence. You do one thing after the other. Selection is where a certain condition is met that that code will execute so in python this to you is if this happens do this else do this elif else all of those if else 
that's what you need to know with selection so selection means if a condition is met then a certain piece of code may run uh, and a loop or a repetition is that's iteration so things like while loops for loops do until all of those words are to do with iteration and looping so just a bit of revision really but that can come up in the exam and they can ask you in a piece of code they might say which bit of this code is an example of selection which line of code is an example of coding by iteration so it's really important to do that now all programs use inputs processes and outputs you probably also going to be familiar with these terms to do with devices as well or maybe in control systems from key stage three again I'd invite you to pause and I'd like you to think about what do you understand in Python and when you code what is an input what is a process and what is an output so pause okay so inputs processes and outputs when you take an input it's probably going to be from the user or from a device an external device a sensor something like that that sends data or information into that system so with Python that would be something like taking a direct input from the user it could be the keyboard controls when they're pressing them or or just like what's your name something like that process is where you use those inputs and do something with them and the computer's working here so it'll be doing a calculation making a decision might be navigating through those kind of rules like if this happens do this while this is this I'll do this and so it's working on that data so process is working on those inputs and an output is the result of the process so it might be that it puts something on the screen it might be that your character moves a certain direction in a said game it could be that a device is triggered like a light turns on or a siren sounded if the system's connected to other devices so those three words are important and they're in kind of just understanding them because every algorithm you design will have inputs processes and outputs so I've got two systems here I've got a burglar alarm and I've got a computer game it doesn't matter what computer game it is um, I just want you to spend a, you know two to five minutes pause the video and just jot down what you think would be sensible inputs processes and outputs of those two devices uh, those two things so a burglar alarm a, a computer game what are the inputs to them what are the processes what are the outputs okay pause okay so what you should have got was some obvious things um, inputs could be many things you some of you will go with the devices as well as maybe thinking of it in code so input device to a burger alarm might be the sensors and the triggers and the keypad that you'd enter the, uh, the code into in terms of within the code itself I guess uh, that you'd have to the code that's running algorithms checking that would still need to process that as an input from the keypad so if you've written the correct code to arm or disarm the system processes would be the monitoring function of the alarm so it's armed and it's primed so it's waiting for intrusion so it'd probably be checking all the sensors and when they trigger it's going to trigger some kind of timed event like a warning sounds going to start um, and it will start a timer timers and delays are always processes so you've got time there to disarm the alarm say you've come back home you get about 20 30 seconds that would be a process that's running and all the audible pips the beeps the squeaks the lights messages coming to the user from the system it's going to be the outputs so the alarm itself um, uh, and any visual output from the system a computer game there's so many things you could say uh, depending on the game but obvious inputs would be keyboard entry uh, controls controllers the mouse you know actual movement uh, to move process movement for in that game um, so your keyboard and mouse and then pressing particular keys the key bindings pressing W save to go forward uh, process would be uh, loads of things that a game could work on it could be working out rolling like number crunching on uh, a bullets hit your character but it's hit you in a certain point so it's got to calculate how much damage it does to you and then take that off your health uh, there's so many it, you could go on forever and outputs would be visual things from the screen everything you see on the screen as a visual output movement of the character things happening in the game are an output um, sound audio music um, there's loads so two key words here and I'm, I am aware that this video is very um, 
def definition based but that is this piece of theory is like that so you just have to bear with me you've made loads of variables in python i know you have you, you know you, you you do all the time um and you know why you'd use them so you know you know you need to store something but you really need to understand what they are and what the difference between that and a constant is so quick pause have a go at doing uh, a, a definition of both just without any guidance and see if you could probably variable you've got a chance at constant perhaps not so much because you might not have come across them uh, at all yet but just uh, have a guess have a go and then we'll see how it is when you come back so pause and see if you can define those two terms for me okay so here's a good comparison of the two and I've got features of comparison uh, variables are changeable all right at, at any time so a variable could be changed by you or perhaps by the system itself when the program is running that's not the case with the constant once the constant's been defined in the system it cannot be changed once the program is running um, so a variable could be your health in a game it's going to change a lot it's going to go up and down depending on what's happening in the game could be just storing a name and that could change um, constants won't and i'll give you a good example of one in a sec how does it work they both work in the same way that they, they're placeholders so whatever you call them in your program and this is where you usually like go name equals bob or uh, score equals zero your that word is a placeholder for the area in memory where it is stored and they work they work in the same way why use a variable it's so that the program has a way uh, you and the program have a way of referring to a value that is going to be needed quite a lot by the program so in the uh, example of a score you would want to be changing that quite a lot of times within a game um, and you need to, a quick and easy way of referring to that area in memory so you can change it so that's why you'd use it and this kind of the same is for a constant but it's a value that you don't anticipate ever changing but you still need it a lot and you want it for quick and easy reference within the code itself for the program to use so the good example i've uh, here are things like variables could be so many lives score name address loads and when you come to a constant it's quite it's a general convention that you write them in full capitals when you define them so if you ever see something written in full capitals like this equals this value it's probably a constant because it's written in full caps which is why i always say when you first start doing python and coding keep it in lowercase don't use any capital letters at all because then you know that's a variable um, a good example of a constant would be pi so pi you're fully aware is you know used in circles and working out areas things like that it can be a massive number depending on how accurate you want your formulas to be well there's pi and it would be make sense to use just the word pi in capitals within the program instead of re writing 3.14 blah 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 every single time and vat like a vat rate that doesn't change well very rarely changes like i've seen it change once in my lifetime um but if you did change at least you could but a constant makes it easy to refer to and there'll be other numbers and examples you could easily look at so we get to, to data types now computers are stupid um they don't know what a piece of data is one from the next they just know it's data so you've got to kind of tell them what they're doing and what they're handling um, so can you think of any if you can jot them down have a quick pause 30 seconds ch -ch -ch, to can you think of any types of data that you would need to store think of what what uh, information you might enter into a computer and how they might be different have a pause okay welcome back um, so here's the data types as you can have a comparison to what you came up with you've got strings integers reals real numbers booleans and characters now a string will store anything that's got a, a combination of letters and numbers within it um, and that can be the, the trick here is something like a phone number would be a string even though it seems like it's got no letters in it the reason you'd store something like a phone number as a string is because it might have a space in it and it might have brackets and it almost certainly starts with a zero and if you stored that as a number the computer would destroy the zero on the front thinking why have you put that zero on the front of a number that doesn't make any sense so 
that's that's a little bit of a trick one so be careful of that other than that things like names address fields anything where you're writing a combination of uh, letters and numbers and lots of it even or a small amount that, that would be a string uh, integer it stores a whole number that's a number with no decimal place so things like how many siblings you have you're not going to have half a brother or you hope you wouldn't because that could be a little bit weird um or how many doors does your car have you can't have half a door half a bedroom on a house right so it's gonna be an integer all right you, you just whole numbers um real um that stores decimal numbers so um something point something uh, like height of something or a distance maybe a boolean stores one of two possible values so they're usually opposing um, and a character stores just a single symbol on its own so I'd invite you to have a pause see if you with what I've just said and what you can see on the screen could you come up with an example and I've said some as I've gone through it and maybe what would that look like in Python so pause now see how you get on Take as much time as you need and then come back. OK, so let's just quickly go through them. Here's some examples of some text. And you can see on the right there, I put name equals Bob. Or if you ever use the prefix str and put the variable, it will turn it into a string. It will define it as a string. Integer, just some solid numbers there, no decimal places. Score equals zero. And if you wanted to force something to be an integer in Python, you put the prefix int and then the variable name in brackets. Real, 3.14, any, any decimal number. And you could just, in Python, Python's clever, and Python lets you take shortcuts. You could just define the number as a decimal and it would know it's a decimal number. But if you needed to force a, a variable into a decimal, you'd have to write the word float, which I know sounds odd, but that's is the word you would use a boolean tr yes no true false anything like that now in python built into python it can use true and false but you must use a capital t and a capital f on the true and false for it to know it goes a different color in python to show that it's understood that and then symbols this would be a string in python a single character would just be a string with one character uh, one length so you just treat it as a string but you do need to know that characters exist as a data type because some program languages might use it python doesn't care it will just use a string for that one character so real word application how does this link into what we really do well let's face it if you can store variables or do sequence or do selection or anything i've talked about these are the fundamental building blocks of what we do in programming you wouldn't be able to write any software at all um, so everything you use, everything you do on a computer has a, at its heart things like variables and constants. And we certainly ha will have a series of code being coded, whether it be in sequence by selection or by iteration. So this is all really, really important stuff. And the real world links, any piece of software needs these building blocks. So if you want to go the extra step. If you should hopefully have Python on your machine, you can only really do this if you've got a laptop or a PC and it's not going to be really very easy to do. I, I believe you can get apps, but you'd have to pay for them on uh, things like iPads and things like that. Uh, I know people who've done it, but I strongly would advise grab the latest version if you've got a PC or a laptop and try and make a couple of programs um, from this slide. I'm not going to read it all out to you. You can pause the video and have a look, uh, but there's little challenges there. One about can you kind of store a constant value of pi and could you write uh, an input and make it work out the area please pause the video have a look at the challenge if you want to uh, do it the thing really you need to do now though is there is a little quiz which i've put uh, on as well in the instructions there which you can now have an attempt at as a as a way of rounding up now i hope it's been a bit more interested than the usual lesson um this is i want to try these i'll ask for some feedback try and get me some feedback in the groups um but it does mean I've had to put my shirt tie on this evening um, and it's a hot evening so I'm a little bit sweaty uh, and apologies again for the video quality. Um, take care everyone please focus do the work get it done and hopefully see you sometime soon. Stay safe all the best.